Well, hello. So I got this Ryobi. Uh, it's a uh, one plus 18 volt inflator deflator air compressor. Uh, convenient little tool, works great. This is the model P731 inflator deflator. It's nice, I like it. My brother kind of got me started in this stuff and we have this one right here. He says, uh, quit deflate or inflating. So the high volume side for like uh, air mattresses and, and, and you know, uh, swimming pool toys and stuff like that works great. But the air compressor side has quit working for some reason. So we're going to tear this thing apart and see what's making it work. So stand by. All right, so in the back of this thing, you'll see all these little screw holes all over the place, okay? You got nine screws. Oh, wait a minute, sorry. There are 10 screws. But what you'll find is when you're digging around on this thing, looking for you, wait, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. All right, the 10th screw is right about there. Yeah, so you gotta take this thing and work with me here just a second. See how I can do this. If you somehow want to just peel it back. Ta-da! Right there. Hole number or screw number 10. So with screw number 10 out, you can start just lifting this housing off of it right here. And the air hose will slide. All right, sorry for sloppy video recording. I'm not a photographer, not a filmer. I'm just curious and on a budget. All right, so on this side, this is your accessory tray. It's gonna slide out. And right there, look at here, we have the tire. <clears throat> this is a, the compressor for the tire. You got your air hose coming in. Looks like it goes over here to a uh, pressure valve, I guess. You know, that's where you adjust it to and from. Uh, that's a little fan. Looks like you got a gear, a metal gear in here, and I don't know, a plastic rod or something. Plastic. Hmm. Very interesting. All right. Okay, well, let's see what makes this thing click. So if you look inside here, I haven't pulled it out yet, but you'll see the little plastic rod and put it back up in there. It's just a little plastic piston. That's what it's all about. So I'm gonna take it apart a little bit further. We'll see what it looks like. Okay, it looks like when I took top of this <laughs> compressor apart, there's all kinds of bad things happen. Got this little spring-loaded little critter right here. It was kind of like, it was rough to work. And then this is a, I guess this would be what you call the head. And it was uh, up on top of that thing. But it come falling out. It's got a bunch of grease in it. This thing's full of grease. And I don't know what this little dude is right here. <clears throat> Part of the reed valves or intake valves or something. Real flimsy metal. Hmm. What is part of the sleeve, maybe? Can you see the piston down in there? It's moving up and down on it. It's not wanting to just slide out, so something, something's not not right i need to put it on top dead center that's what it was i didn't put it top dead center you know you gotta take the number one cylinder and uh that's what it is boys i always put everything top dead center and it's not coming out i guess you got ring that thing must have rings in it hmm all right so i think i figured out what's the problem i think this little guy here. This is like the in tank valve. And you can see it's broke. And it sets down on top of that hole. 
kind of like that and when the piston assembly moves up and down you know of course it'd be like a, a vacuum suction that's how it'd suck in and compress the air and put it back out and this is the head it's got an o-ring in it i, mean, I guess I'm like a head gasket I haven't cleaned it up well, but this thing got all kinds of grease in it. I guess it's, it has to have a lot of grease, keep it lubricated, and keep it cool. Um, but I'm gonna spray it off a little bit here with some brake clean and see see what it looks like in there. All right, so no brake clean. I'm gonna try something else. Curious CRC QCA2 degreaser. Spray it on, wipe it off. Brakes down grease, oil, tar, rubber streaks, road grime, and leave no residue. I'm just curious. It's the quickest, closest thing I could grab. Okay, so this is the head again. Okay, it's clean, and this is the head gasket. So just like a big O-ring, and this right here, I'm gonna guess it's like a reed valve, and it attached. Get a little handy dandy screwdriver. Right here, that's where it attached at. Okay, and it's like it's got it's like a little press fit or something or other. Look down, you see through the bottom of the piston. See there. So when it moves up and down, it's like a you know a reed valve. Uh, it's pretty self. You know when the piston goes down for say, it it would suck in air. And then when it comes up, you know look, of course that makes you compression. So that's what's wrong with this little guy is this little bitty flap, or reed valve. It goes right there. Broke. Hmm. Interesting. All right. After a minute or two of reconsideration and calculations and such, I have come up with not only one that has our piston reed valve issue, but another unit here that has, you can't see the damage, but it was left attached to a vehicle. Somebody uh, got in a hurry and put it in left and run away. Um, and dragging a portal pump with it down the road. So it's got air hose problems and who knows what else. It has some road rash on it, but it appears to have a functioning piston motor. So I think I'm going to take one and make one. Okay, so what I've done here is I just went ahead and took this top piece off it's got the air hose air line and it does not come out the only way to get that thing out is to on cut the hose i ain't gonna cut the hose it's good hose so you can take this little charger assembly off them right there i have four screws in it and so we're gonna keep on tearing it apart okay so here's the second one tore apart the top off of it and a piston assembly and everything looks like lot better in this one so hopefully we can have a good donator reed valve in it still good little head to head gasket so i took this part a little bit further uh i'm gonna go ahead and clean that reed valve and stuff before i put this guy back together i think probably the best thing to do is it's got quite a bit of junk in it Probably help it efficient, you know, more efficiently and such. So got that little dude cleaned up. So I'm gonna finish drying it off and uh, put a little grease in it and put it back together. Okay, so uh, put the piston back together, put the reed valve in, clean a little bit of grease, and got the head back on it, and we're gonna start back to reassembling now. Okay, so here we go again. I got the Roby. What a mess, tore apart, put back together, uh, interchanged some parts. A uh, couple other pieces from this other one over here. Well, here, a donator. So take two, make one. Uh, so let's get the battery and see what happens with this thing. Curious if it'll ever run again. Okay, so I got a four amp hour battery in it. And I'll put this little quick connect on here because I don't have a tire available handy right now and it's pouring down the rain. I don't want to go outside and deflate a tire. So let's just let's just see what happens, I guess. I mean it's uh it, it will or it won't. Ooh, let's see. Okay, 
Okay, let's. I don't know about, about 10 pounds. How about that? Let's see if it'll work. Appears to be working some was well, cutting off but at least it's pumping now such a good thing all right so there is a i guess you recall a redneck engineering fix of the ryobi p731 air compressor uh just check that little piece of stuff it quits pumping air if you got the knowledge or want to it ain't that big of a deal take this dude apart and this right here seems to be the culprit i haven't figured out exactly how to fix it yet uh, maybe drill out those uh in the top of the compressor on top of the piston sorry there's these two little it looks like to be maybe pop rivets possibly i suppose you could probably drill them out but this little tool is only like 39 dollars at home depot so i mean unless you're bored or out in the middle of nowhere on gilgans island and have no other way um, it'd probably be cheaper and easier just to replace it, but I was curious if it was raining and I just want to see what I could do with it. So there you go. Back in the truck.